or sobriety. I'm talking about always being how can I what can I do? How can I do? When I talk about sobriety, I mean you remember when you were in school? How many of us were very serious in the study? Some of us were jokers. I remember I was a big joker, I still uh, serving in the church. When I went to high school, I was leading a choir in the church. I thought my life purpose is that choir. <laughs> Everything I have, I put in that choir. It's called Maranatha Choir. It is still existing. I'm the one who publishes book for them. You buy book, you bring to me, I write for you. They tell me my handwriting is very good. So I sit in a class publishing book for everybody in the choir. So I use, like I take a, uh, over 70 songs, so I sit down for Darasani for Monetu. So you can imagine what Kakwanga Nambanga because I want to read it. I was down there. Around number 60 something. Out of 80. And then when somebody who was bringing us up in the same choir did the exam and got D minus. I woke up. <laughs> I woke up. Not waking up. I woke up. You can't believe me I became number one the following time. It's not because I am a fool. What I'm trying to say is sometimes there's a way we behave. It is only, we only become sound when God's light shines in our hearts. And for the last one week, I have already seen what will happen in the whole of 2023 until December. I also have the theme for next year with me here. I know what I'm going to do for the whole year. The plans I'm writing down, we are going to share with some of the leaders. Amen. What is your 2023 talking about? God can show you the future and cause you work in it. So that you're not going to think about what will governor do or what will the president do. If you plan your life with God, you will succeed everywhere. He makes things happen for us. Amen. Joseph was, saw his future and he began organizing his life. And began thinking of how to live without interfering with God's plan for his life. No wonder he became great. No wonder he became healthy healthy in his body and wealthy. You can't serve God's purpose and be poor. Amen. I use, are you so attentive until you cannot say amen? I'm saying you cannot be part of God's work, part of God's purpose and remain this program we call it Youth with Joseph organized his life. Last time I read the first part of uh, his his dream because we read the first dream and then we I think I want to read the second one today and then I speak about dream. Most of us are going to the future that we don't know. I know some of us will say, you know, I don't know what will happen to me from now next year. I don't know. 2024, I don't know. You can know. You can know. I hope this mic is working. It's like I'm not hearing anything. Maybe I'm used to this other one. Uh, no, don't remove that one. You didn't. So let me read the first and then I go into the second. Uh, we read until verse 7 last week. In verse 8. 
the second dream and he dreamt yet another dream and told it his brethren and said behold i have dreamt a dream a dream more and behold the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me and he said i told it to his father and to his brethren and his father rebuked him and said unto him what is this dream that thou hast dreamt shall i and my thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth and his brethren envied him but his father observed the same now at this moment joseph is 17 years old At this point is 17 years old and uh, because he avoided evil god opened his eyes to see the future i think if you also talk naturally let me not talk even about the spirit of things and all these things when you look somebody when you see somebody in a class performing is always at the top that person will make sure is avoiding anything that is cursing is that true in class i was one of them who was at the top if i woke up from some point i will make sure i studied it in maragua i think they are calling it maragua now a mixed school you can imagine what normally happens with a mixed school You naturally have a friend. Bene, I may say a friend, you know which friend is that. Especially when you're in high school. And everybody has friends and you look like a confused guy moving around. But I'm number one in class. I didn't even think about that. All others are engaging in themselves in all these kind of things. Anybody who is serious about his future or they don't concentrate on the present they concentrate on the on the future you are going to even if you think about marrying you think about marrying somebody who will walk with you in your future <laughs> not today <laughs> some of us because we don't have vision now we concentrate around and you ask about future you don't know Joseph is a person like that. He never thought all he was looking at is the future. When you look at the future and you you think about your future. You get thinking about your future now. Everything you do is different from people who don't know that. I've been studying about leadership and I realized that crowds don't see far. There will always somebody who should just wake up and lead crowds somewhere. One person has to arise. Huh? One person who will take care of you. because people you are used to conforming to their environment to the people around them. It is natural. Now the, the biggest problem that Abraham presented to us, not Abraham, Adam, is for our physical eyes to be open. If your eyes are open and your spiritual eyes is dull, you will be so much carried away by what happens in the environment. But anybody whose eyes see the inner eyes is open to see beyond the physical will concentrate five years from now what will I and how should i behave now so that i'll be different then 10 years from now how should i behave this guy saw the future and that's why even when he spent time with his brothers he singles himself out he doesn't engage himself in what they talk 
because they are engaging in foolishness. They are talking things that you don't want to hear. Many of us have been part of a class somewhere. And I know you must be aware of how your, your, your age mates, classmates, who are behaving sometimes, who are not seeing far. Talking things that you don't want to hear with your ears. When you sin, pull yourself out from among them. And that's what normally God does. The word church means them that are separated from others. Ecclesia. They have been removed from. They were separated. We are talking about in our fellowship class, we are talking about sanctification. Saints. The word saint simply means the one that has been removed from among and preserved for a specific work. So God has pulled us out from among many so that he will put us somewhere, train us and then he will use us to turn around the environment. If you ever want to be great, you have to be mindful about your future. He saw his future. God opened his eyes. I pray that God will open your eyes in Jesus' name. So that you know where you're heading. So that you plan your life now and live accordingly. You know what I mean by accordingly? Live accordingly. I have a call. Myself, I have a call. That's why I have to be very different. Very different. I have chosen to be very different because I know what is going to happen in Marsabi in the next 10 years. And I've decided to be a leader of that move of God in Marsabi County. Until everybody in the county knows that somebody has been raised by God. You know when God raised the somebody, everybody knows. Moses, everybody knew. Jesus, everybody knew. So this man is standing here. I know I have divine divine assignment over this land. And that's why I have to be very different from others. There's a way I've been called. I wasn't called like any other. There's a way I was called. That's why I do what others don't do. I get into a school where others don't go. I sit with other people who don't, others don't sit with. I bring people who others don't have the bring. There's, there's something about there's something about us all. There's something about this Joseph. God singled him out. And his focus is on God. You can't focus your eyes on God and be ashamed in your generation. It is not possible. One of the biggest things that you need now, irrespective of where you are, whether you are enjoying what you are enjoying, the life you are living, whether you are enjoying the amount of money that is coming to you, whether you, whatever, wherever you are, what matters is not where you are right now. What matters is where you are going. What matters is whether you see where you are, where you are going. If you don't see three years from now, Five years from now, ten years from you can dwell carelessly. If you don't see the next one year, that is why when you see the future, you have to be very careful who is around you. You don't just sit with anybody around you. You don't befriend anyone. I'm just describing Joseph. But Joseph is just unique. He might live in his father's house. But he knows he's a different guy. Even his father realized this boy. Why do you think for over 20 years the father was still crying? And he said he could not forget Joseph. He could not. He the pain of Joseph remained with Jacob almost his whole life until he saw Joseph. 
He knows something you need about Joseph. That all his brothers don't know. He knew the person who is going to take over from him. In this life, we should not live like people who are only looking for food to eat. I'm just chasing job. The reason is why I am here is so that I get money. There has to be a bigger purpose to serve beyond your stomach. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? There has to be a bigger purpose beyond your Stop. There has to be a bigger purpose. There has to be something that people will not really talk, be, be so much proud about the job they're doing. Because that job is only helping you. It's only helping you. Just taking care of your stomach and your family. But at some point, people will wake up and see. Who is there for us? Even if we are also looking for food for ourselves. Leadership is needed at some point in every generation. Somebody will feel like, who can I look for? Even if I'm still eating my food. Even if I'm, I have a job, I have this. I've realized it doesn't matter what you have. Even money, even houses, best vehicle and whatever, you will never enjoy life until you find a purpose in God. In fact, so I see, you know, to God, it is a big loss. The big thing about life is not you to exist. It is for you to live for a reason that puts smile on the face of everybody. Joseph was not so much about himself. So focused on others until God opened his eyes. And his, when God opened his eyes to see the future, he decided to preserve himself from any evil in his environment. And he chose to realign his life with what God sh did show him into the future. I know you have a dream. I know you have a dream. But the other question is Is it your dream? Or God has deposited his dream in you? I'm not talking about the dream that you talk to us about, I want to be a doctor. I want to be an engineer. <laughs> I want to be <laughs> the one that never came to pass. Especially for some of us. I'm talking about a dream that that exists in your heart. That, you know, God deposits something in our heart. There are so many people who have even gone to college, university, studied some degrees, and have never practiced. I know so many of them. Even when I was in college, I knew them that never practiced, they began doing something different from what they studied. So many, 50% of them, even who excel. Because when you talk about a dream, you're talking about, you're not talking about this survival tactics, what you get. I'm talking about something about salad. Dream is bigger than that. When you have a dream, you can employ as many as 1,000 people. You must come out of, I know we begin there, we begin from where we get salary and something of that sort. But somebody must rise to a place where a whole generation is looking to you. On a specific people in the society are looking to your service. Amen. 
I'm talking about a specific people. A specific group of people in the society are eagerly waiting to be served by you. And you also know, and that's why one of the reasons why I want I'm speaking, I want to speak, I'm speaking what I'm speaking is because God has a bigger vision for you than what you have. That's a small thing that is bringing some small money to you. God has bigger things beyond you. Bigger! I mean bigger things. That what can you bring even billions in your account? Stop, stop, I don't speak about millions. We need to go up, yeah? Today, one million is too small. One million is too small. Ten million, hundred million, still small. Let me say one million is small. I can easily get it. Why are you not saying? Yeah, one million is too small. I can easily have it. This is small. You're looking at me. You're looking at me and wondering, Pastor, what are you saying? I am saying what I am saying. You cannot sit here long enough. It's still small in my head. Yesterday I went to the bank. With Mary. We looked at it. That's my name. It is one million. We are realizing our budget is increasing every day. So we looked at, we said how much do we, how much is getting to the account roughly per month? It's around 130. We have to do is so much. And that money is small. I am dreaming to have monthly income of 400,000 beginning next month. Don't believe it. How much? How much? That is when some of you will believe that God sent me to myself to do something. That money is small. 1.39 money is very small. I want to put on radio every morning from Monday to Friday, besides Saturday and Sunday. Besides Saturday and Sunday, what the one we are doing already, I want to put a program from Monday to Friday. People are demanding for it. And we need the money. Amen. Yes. Even on C on Child BFM. Yesterday evening they were calling me and I just have to stop some calls. We need money. And if the vision that has been given has to work thousands across the county until and I also realized bigger percentage of people in Southeast South South Ethiopia, Yabal, Omega, it, they are listening to our programs. They are the ones who are demanding even for more. I'm talking about a dream that People will just happy about it and they thank God for you. I don't care about whether I'm eating or not eating. But if a, a good percentage of the count of Marsabit and beyond are asking for more what God has put in me, I have to live for that dream. It's not about me now. About my generation. I'm talking about that kind of dream. Joseph never dreamt about himself. All he did that last happened that the whole world benefited from him. Amen. That is a kind of in fact that is only one account. The cooperative one. I have not even looked at this other one. The equity one. I didn't even look at it. We have to reach a place where we are going to have one million per month 
10 million per month. I believe in a God who will raise people who finances this work with millions. This work. It looks like small, yeah? It is not small. In fact, we are now nearing a place where we must have our radio station. And if you want a radio station, you only need 5 million. And they're speaking to people everywhere. From your house. Certain is a radio station called Compound Young. And I'm addressing the whole area. I'm talking about the dream of that kind. And for everybody who is sitting under my voice, God has a big vision. <laughs> a big. If you are a teacher, don't remain a teacher. Begin a school. Employ people in Jesus' name. It is possible. It is why don't you begin several schools? I'm saying several, not one. And you employ everybody around. I don't know if you thought of that. If you're a business person, why don't you import direct from Dubai and everywhere? Hmm? What are you doing? If you are you're applying to begin an organization, whichever it is, why can't it serve thousands of people? Your future is as big as your mind. If all you are thinking is, is what to eat, the stomach thing, you'll never be useful to God and to your generation. God began from nothing. My prayer is that you catch a vision, a dream that God has for you. And many a times a dream, you know, I am surprised. I'm surprised that people who are not born again, but who are beginning things and serving their community and attracting big monies to their account. There's a lady who's always putting something on Facebook and we, many of us are wondering. The other day she won something in Dubai. Now this other day we are, we are, she is talking about we also she just began something down there in Torbi and every now and then she's winning something. You know you are like what? Somebody was asking her. Kwani <laughs> wewe? <laughs> she's always getting the, the attention of the world every time. She's not a born again person. Why not us? I don't believe in this smallness that we, we have now. God can blow us up <laughs> and become so great in the land. I mean, Wherever you are employed, you can employ that person together with his organization. I am serious. Big vision, big dreams. I mean big. It is very demeaning not to have money. I have prayed to God, I said, I I think, I don't know why God always wants us to begin from scratch. Because sometimes you become, people look at you and they despise you because you don't have something. But when you are put, when you have big monies, nobody will despise you. Nobody. Not even the rich. <laughs> nobody. And that's why we must rise to a place where we are going to have money in our accounts that are bigger than what we have ever thought. You need to stand a place where everybody will respect you, even financially. And it is possible. I have, I have, you know, these big ministries, Pastor Lies, you, who, and who. He raised people from nothing. I want to deal with people of nothing who have gone somewhere through what I taught them. Forget of them that have already become big. I believe in a God as a pastor, if God really called me. I believe in God lifting people before my eyes 
and then becoming great. Forget about these things where we put people together, we want something from their pockets. No? If anointing, this anointing is real, somebody's life must change as I am looking at their life. You look at Oyedepo, began from scratch. He put a signpost somewhere. International Church. <laughs> 1988, nothing. You know, nothing. And God told him, go and make my people rich. Can the church make somebody rich? Yes. The anointing on that man is to make anybody who comes and sit there become rich. This anointing makes people rich. Today is the biggest church. And the sons are the ones who are building the biggest church in the world. It is possible to be that big person. People have associated church with poverty. Pastors with poverty. Because they didn't understand the things of God. And many of these pastors are not called. They're just standing behind the pulpit talking what they don't know. They've never met the God of heaven and earth. I cannot meet the God who has made heaven and earth and be struggling here and wondering what to do. He has been feeding his people with birds. Why does God use widows, poor people to take charge of his men when, the, when there are some rich people are there in the church? He wants to show that he's God. I was just watching through the Bible until Jesus even says it's hard for a rich person to go to. Somebody who took care of my need, my, my fees to school, he had no job. He paid for my fees from February last year until this month. He had no job. He got a job when I preached and then he said, Pastor, I am paying your fees. 15,000 every month. Somebody didn't get anything. Now he's telling me, another door has opened in Ethiopia. You cannot. I am talking about a God that lives. We cannot get attached with him. Then he was telling me yesterday, now I want to resign and then I will be, I will be a consultant for so many organizations in Ethiopia. For 10 years, he couldn't get a job. Dennis, I'm talking about Dennis here. Now he's very safe with his wife in the place of work. And every new thing that comes, they give it to him. Last week, they took us for lunch and they told us, if we remember what happened to us because of you people. <laughs> very frustrated. I want to see the future of this man in this land. Ahami, then is a Kuapa. And then we can tell God. Now you, you see, Lord, listen in Jesus' name. If you are serious with this work, you cannot remain small all the days of your life. I'm saying you cannot. I'm saying you can. Not. I'm talking about a dream. A dream that lifts you to a place where the whole world will see you. Because if the God we serve is big, you must be big. I'm saying if the God we serve is big, you must be. You must. And that's why one of the things that you need to desire is to have a serious relationship with this God. Not a joking type. Not a kind where you, you, you treat things of God casually. If you are serious with God, God will be serious with you. And many of us are young, you know. We are being told, one body, somebody asked in the class, when my pastors were Kenya, they were broke. And then to know now, they were Wazungu, 
Wenye hata wajui Mungu vile si tunaomba na nini. They are very <laughs> Some just the pastor was asking in there. And then the, the teacher answered like this. <laughs> says, look at the white people. Even when they don't have. In fact, somebody can stop eating lunch and he gives the lunch for the whole year and sends to Africa. Sisi tunajua tu kufanya nini? And then she said, Pastor Lai, didn't use any amount from outside to build that church and that ministry. All that he has used, he has used over 300 million to put up a structure. And he began with broke people, you know broke? <laughs> and those broke people built that thing and those broke people are like right now thousands are getting saved in machakos for those of you who have been watching the day before yesterday yesterday and today and people are supporting from, they empty their bank account on that man he never took any money from anywhere from ab- he refuses money that comes from abroad and all of them are rich as we think when we say give money is loose getting out of your pocket no I didn't think of talking this. I don't know why. My dream is people who will command big finances in their time for the kingdom of God. Big finances. The money in this account in this in this town can get into your accounts. I don't care where you come from. Whether you come from down Kenya or you're from within it is not about where you come from on earth it's about where you come from heaven that's what matters if you come from heaven and you land under an anointing the wealth i told you on Thursday before i left here the Thursday i preached farao has to empty some of his accounts and give abraham wealth that made him extremely rich that you read in chapter number 13 of act in genesis that money came from farao that money came from who those when he left and went where god told him farao has to give whichever way it came listen It is the time of the move of God in Marsabit. Others are moving God. Pastor Lina will be doing conferences, crusades. Next crusade will be in Bungoma. Next will be will be going to hit every I am going to do the same in Marsabit. We are going to go everywhere. Make this gospel known. and god moves with his wealth amen yes i am praying that many of us who as you are coming up you know i am praying that you understand what is happening here here we are not just coming to joke sing some songs like people do and disappear we are on a very serious business in this place and god will only move with them that move Joseph became great because he caught God's agenda for his time. His brothers lost. Even when he what he went through he was just a preparation to take him to a, to, a, to a greater place. That's why our mind must think God's purpose now for my generation. We have to be active in what God is doing now. You only make meaning to God or you're only meaningful to God when you are part of what he's doing. And let me also tell you, your money must also participate in the work of God. It will only bring more money. <laughs> Amen. Yes, learn, learn to give. When I began this church, this church had nothing. I began giving as a church as a pastor seed 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 
When I finished doing the conference here, I was less 35,000 that Sunday evening. I told God I need that money by tomorrow. That night of Sunday, Sunday night, somebody sent 14,000. The following morning, somebody sent 20,000. I cannot lack if God asks me to do something. Then the other, the other morning, somebody else another sent another 20,000. The offering we have in this church is 2,000 every Sunday. If you don't know, let me tell you. <laughs> and I don't run the, 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 the program I'm running here. I'm not running with the offering here. The program on radio and all. If you see our expense is big. If you even think from the time we began until now, three conferences, how much we are using, books we are printing and all these things. Because God is moving, he will provide for his work. But even as youths, if you want to bring that big money to yourself, I want you to participate with what you have. If it is 100 bob, it's not small. If it is 200, it's not small. We must serve him. Before God releases open heaven, he wants to test us. I'm talking this because we are in a time when God is moving in a big way. And our vision should be... Now, some of you, I don't know, you're sitting here. Do you know? Only when people live here, they tell me, they tell us how this church is resourceful when they live here. Patients left and say, Pastor, I'm looking for church. I cannot find. Kevin is leaving soon. And he's telling me what will happen to me. Some of you have come here and after some few months you began feeling something unique is happening, unique teaching is happening here. We need more other people to come and sit and hear. Whose responsibility is that is our responsibility. You who came here, I want to see you bring more people here. If you are being blessed, why don't you bring other people to be blessed? That is the biggest business of the kingdom of God now. That friend of yours, wherever you are, when you pull them here, I was surprised. Last week we had five people, who new people who came, and they are brought by new people. I asked them, who brought you? Who brought you? Who brought you? Kevin is the one who brought, Ruth brought the other one, the other one brought other. New people are bringing in. New people. Our business is simple, to change the life of people. And cause them a testimony, to be a testimony and bring them from elsewhere. Every day, this church will be full next year. You know, all those seats will not be empty. These seats will not be empty. This church will be full. I don't know what we'll do. The things that places God most is not us coming and disappearing. No. It's new people to be coming in, change, new people coming in to be changed. When you begin seeing new, and I want tangible, tangible change. See, le mtu anakuja church. Hii church ni zuri. Ni zuri yaje. Nini mebadilika ndani ya maisha yako? Is there any tangible change somebody can talk from out there? When that person entered there, life changed. Tunapata bonga point wakati watu wapia wanakuja na wanabadilika. Heaven stands. Heaven begins releasing more wealth. When lives are changing, I am already in next year. <laughs> because the plan for next year is more souls in the house of God. And more of these souls to be brought. And not just bring in. Kwa kanisa tumejifuza kuleta watu wapia lakina tuju kwa kuza. Kwa lea. Hapa tunawalea. Baka wasimame. Waanze kuimba na sisi hapa. Waanze kupreach. Amen. I'm going too far. I, I'm sorry, I'm emptying my head, my heart here now, but let me stop it there. I'm talking about a vision, a dream. You're not sitting under any kind of roof. Some of you came to meet God, and you, will, you will meet him the way he is, you know. You look at your life and you turn back and see where you came from, you will be surprised. God taking you to a place where you never dreamt of. 
giving you big businesses, big the dream of God is going to settle on you. You cannot sit under me, my, my teaching and remain there. Some of you are going to see a dream that you have never dreamt of that God has for you. And you're going to carry it out. You'll be surprised at how it will work. If it is something God has introduced to you, it has to be big. I remember in, in June when we fixed this place, we used 700,000. Very minimal giving from the church. But the thing has happened. God is here. He will make things for us to happen. He says, I will do things for my sake. <laughs> for my... If he gives you a big dream and makes you big, he is doing it for his sake so that you become great and show glory to his name. And we are in that time when God moves in a big way. It is a very rare opportunity in the history of church that happens once in a while. It's called Cairo time. Opportune time. When God lands on your life because of your commitment to him and he blesses you bigger in a bigger way that your mind cannot comprehend. At this time, more souls are going to flock into the church. People, businesses are going to expand without understanding the expanse. Expansion. Things will happen which you cannot say, I did it. It is God doing it. So in the next five years, we are going into that kind of times. And somebody's ear must be open to hear this. Everywhere God is going to do big things. That's why please don't miss our world class. I don't put a program because I feel. Every program we put in the church is God speaking to them that have ears. I'm talking about wealth. This, this mentality of a small salary and whatever will end. God will extend your head. I mean extend. God will broaden. What you need is knowledge for your mind to be big so that you do big things. If small ideas are in your head, God cannot change your life. Amen. Amen. Wow, this is not ending. Let me cut it off myself. Father, we are thankful. At this moment, thank you. Thank you Thank you for your move in our time, especially at this time. I pray that our ears will be alert to hear the big and great things that you want to do through us in this land. That we realign our lives and ourselves for this great move I mean great move that way we focus on your agenda not on our stomachs not on our fame not on what we want but what is about you Holy Ghost thank you thank you this dream, I know you have a better dream for us for tomorrow. I pray that everybody listening, you'll expand them supernaturally. The blessing we talk about that we studied in Grace for Increase, that is already at work in us, greatly functioning.
will have its purpose be fulfilled. You told Abraham, I'm blessing you because of people around. Let every dream, small dream become big now in the name of Jesus. Let our eyes be opened in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We honor you. That's why we come every morning to sit under your feet. I speak the future of this youth seated here will never be small. In whichever way they found themselves in Marsabit at this place, I speak that things that will blow their them apart and make them great will happen to them in the precious name of Jesus. Their eyes will be opened to see bigger things than they're doing. Thank you for what they're doing currently. But I speak expansion that is supernatural in nature in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak business ideas. Business ideas. Or whichever idea that they have. The skills that brings millions in the precious name of Jesus. The skills, the anointing that does great is already on us. I pray that there will be understanding of what you're doing currently. For the glory of your holy name. Lord, we honor you. We give you praises. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to give as we come to the end of this service. In the name of Jesus. Father, we are grateful for this giving. We call it a seed that will bring more to your house. In Jesus' name we pray. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Spirit is with us now and forevermore. Amen.